Hi and welcome back to a new video. You might remember from the 6800 XT or 6900 XT videos, I always pointed out that those cards, for whatever reason, have this artificial clock limit. 2800 MHz or 3 GHz, depending on if you're talking about 6800 XT or 6900 XT. And I was all, always wondering, like, why did AMD come up with this very strange artificial clock limit? I was in contact with AMD directly. It never worked out. They never removed this clock limit for whatever reason, but now PowerColor sent over this Liquid Devil. And it's not only just a normal Liquid Devil, but apparently it's a Liquid Devil Ultimate, which should have a clock limit of 4 GHz. That could be very interesting, because those cards, in theory, should have the potential to reach the highest clock ever achieved, let's say like that. As far as I know, the highest clocks so far reached on GPUs are just above 3 GHz. I found a result with 3012 MHz, I think that was a 1080, and then there was a result with 3015 MHz, I think that was a 2080 or a 3090. I cannot remember correctly, but both were NVIDIA GPUs. Just above 3 GHz were so far the highest achieved clocks on GPUs. What we're trying today is to break those records, maybe set 3100 MHz, 3200 MHz, we will see what kind of clocks we can even reach. But first of all, I have to even check if the clock limit was actually removed or if this is just marketing, blah, blah, we will find out. We'll set up my system right here, first of all, with water cooling, then we check the basic overclocking potential of the card, check if the BIOS limit is removed, and then we will move over to liquid nitrogen overclocking and hope that we can break some records today. CSONIC the heart of your system. All right, 6900 XT water cooled is running right now on a Maximus 12 Apex, C590 anyway. It's with an 11900K, which doesn't matter. The 11900K is even running stock because for this type of video, we just want to push the GPU. It doesn't really matter. The only reason why I went for C590 or Intel is because I know how this behaves on cold. While I don't have that much experience for PCI Express and high clocks on AMD, that's why I just, went for Intel, but it doesn't matter, as I said before. Right now, still water-cooled, just to check the basic performance, base numbers, just to see if everything is in line, and later we will mount the LN2 cooling block. The first and most important thing we want to know is if we still have the clock limit. I'm using PPGen, which is like an AMD internal tool I got a few months ago, but anyway. I can read out the power play table from the driver this way can directly see those are the two limits I was talking uh, about before. And those were sitting at like 2800 or 3 gigahertz, depending on if it was a 6800 XT or 6900 XT. As you can see, those are now unlocked to 4 gigahertz. There's other stuff we could check like fan control or like the voltages which are allowed on this BIOS, but everything else is stock. I mean, everything is stock. I didn't adjust anything on the BIOS so far because the first attempt will be just if we can yeah, break the record just by cooling down the card with liquid nitrogen. Of course, we could also go that far that we are attaching an Elmore EVC to the card directly, use I2C and then access like the GPU voltages, change the GPU power limit, which we can also do with the more power tool, which is now supporting the 6900 XT, but I don't think that even this will be necessary because just by cooling down the card with liquid nitrogen, I'm not sure how low we can go, but it should lower the power consumption that much that we should be able to reach like those kind of frequencies, what we want to see. But first of all, let's check out temperatures of the stock card, like with the stock water block and what kind of frequencies we can expect from this card without changing anything. All right, so you can see 3D Mark times by Extreme GT1 running in the background right now. That will also be the test we're going to use to check out the highest frequency we're trying to achieve. And this is the highest result I can get just on stock cooling with a 360 radiator, which is cooling the GPU and at the same time also the CPU. It's just above 2800 MHz. GPU temperature like 55, 56, 57. Considering that it's a 360 radiator, which is also cooling the CPU, I think the temperature is all right. Adjusted the GPU core clock in GPU tweak. Also increased the GPU voltage and also the power target. But that's everything I did so far. That is the highest frequency we can reach in 3D mic times by Extreme GT1. And now it's time to modify the card. So this seems to be like a one-way connector <laughs> because you can plug in the power connector, but you can basically not remove it because there's not enough clearance. If you press this nose right here, 
it will not come off. Uh, all right. As you can see, the water cooling block is already gone from the cart. It had a good contact. As you can see, it was ground very well in thermal paste. I approve. Also, you can see there are still the pads on the VRMs, but I will leave them on because it's like a very thin and like soft pad and it will fall apart if I try to remove it. That's why I will just leave it on for now. The only thing I will have to try is if the card will make good contact with our GPU cooling container because there is this tiny inductor next to the GPU and this could potentially collide. I think it will just make it by like one or two millimeters, but we will find out in a second. Just very happy that back then I made my like universal mountings, even though this is like a little bit wobbly, but yeah, this way I can fit the card if I just move it completely to the outside. All right, but I will try and see first if this thing fits. All right, looks good so far. I mean, there's no thermal pad, uh, thermal paste on there yet, but at least nothing's colliding. Can I think you can see it a little bit, but contact looks sufficient. Just installed also the thermal probe on the container. That's something you should never forget before mounting the card. Otherwise, you have to take apart everything again, which can be quite annoying. Also applied Cryonaut Extreme Thermal Paste, and you can see it's a lot of thermal paste, and that's on purpose. It's not like this is like isolating because if you put on too much, the layer will be too thick or whatever. That's not what's going to happen because the mounting pressure is so high that everything which is too much squeezes out to the side and then it will cover also the edges on like left, right, bottom, top, just to make sure that everything, even the edges make contact with the cooler. That's kind of essential for extreme overclocking. Doesn't matter so much on normal, like everyday OC, you won't notice a difference, but for liquid nitrogen, that is also important. All right, we'll mount the card and then see how it goes. And before I forget about the entire insulation topic, I will not insulate the card for now for this quick test because I just want to see how it behaves with cold. If there is still something I have to measure like voltages or whatever, because if the entire card is insulated with like liquid rubber or with like Vaseline, it will make measurements much more complicated. That's why for first initial quick test, this should be fine. Yeah, looks good. Liquid nitrogen is also ready. We'll put back the card into the system and then we're good to go. So far so good, the card seems to be able to handle cold very well. You can see the card is only hitting 65,000 degrees Celsius. Obviously that's a readout mistake. Anyway, it seems to be handling cold quite, uh, cold quite well. We're at about minus 50 degrees Celsius, which is not that cold so far, but it's just to check if the card can handle cold in any way. But yeah, pot is freezing. Just looks beautiful. So far, no condensation or anything on the card. I will keep testing. So I'm running into some kind of artifacts at, I'm not sure if you can see it. Let's check if the focus works. Yeah, it's about minus 90 degrees Celsius. At that point, it seems to not like the temperature that much because you're getting some kind of artifacts and you can see the GPU Z is already doing some weird stuff, but I think we can just give it a try and see if this type of temperature is already enough. Because what is cool, that is what you can see with liquid nitrogen, the chip power draw already dropped to like 310. That should give us plenty of headroom.
just at a 3 GHz barrier. Okay. Already spotted peaks above 3.1 GHz. Yeah, 32, 3200 MHz on the GPU. That is quite insane. All right. Damn it. Ah, uh, yeah. Seems like that was too cold. It crashed at like minus 138. Seemed like this was a little bit too cold. I'm not sure if the system is starting up right now or if I have to heat up the container to get it back to work. It also seems to be, yeah, it's nice and frosty from the back. That's cool, literally. But we got it. We already got the record. 3200 megahertz on the GPU. Yep, system is back up and running. It just needed a little bit more temperature, just above minus 100 degrees Celsius. And now it's back up and running. I will keep trying. All right, it seems like the thermal paste cracked, which means that the GPU lost contact to the GPU container. Like the thermal paste kind of loses contact because of the different thermal expansion rates between the different materials. <laughs> Which means that I will have to try it again, but since it's already quite late today, I will try again tomorrow. Well, for you, it will continue in a few seconds, but I will also have to dry everything because it's getting a little bit frosty and it's very likely that I have some condensation issue somewhere as well. But so far, this was working well for like, uh, I don't know, like two hours. That, that's not even bad. We'll try again tomorrow. All right, so I tested it for almost uh, two more days. It seems to be quite difficult, at least with this specific card, with this specific sample, because whenever I go lower than minus 90 degrees Celsius, I start having a lot of artifacts. And at the same time, I need this very low temperature to be able to run like 3.2 gigahertz or above. It's still, as far as I know, it's still the highest achieved ever clock for a graphics card. And that is also what I expected from the 6900 XT in the first place, but then, AMD started to have this artificial clock limit, which never made sense. And yeah, this seems to be the only card or like Red Devil Ultimate, Liquid Devil Ultimate. I mean, I will put the link for the BIOS in the description. So you can probably flash it to other cards. I'm not sure this way you could probably unlock it um, also to have a clock limit of four gigahertz. But you know this meme, I'm not sure how it, how it was called, like the guy falls off bicycle meme where he puts the rod into the bicycle, yeah. That is exactly what AMD is doing with the 6900 XT because those cards have enormous potential, at least for extreme overclocking. I mean, if you spend more time on this, if you start binning cards, that, that is one out of one card. If you bin cards, you will certainly find a card that can run 3.3, maybe 3.4, maybe even 3.5 gigahertz on the core with liquid nitrogen. So those cards certainly have a lot of potential for extreme overclocking to beat like RTX 30 records. All right, let's see how this will go once this unlock BIOS is out there in the wild and people start tweaking cards and maybe I will spend more time if I get a new LN2 delivery, I will maybe attach the Elmer EVC and try like uh, with increased voltage if we can get even further. All right, that was still quite cool. I enjoy those cards much more than RTX 30 series for XOC. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye bye.